CataractCoach.com. Can I use Alcon Vividi Extended Depth of Focus IOLs in eyes with corneal disease, retinal issues? What about glaucoma? Now, this is a nice lens and it has its place in our toolbox. I am always a fan of having more options for our patients. This is the Alcon Vividi lens. You can see there's a central zone with a beam shaping element. And this does elongate that depth of focus and gives the patients a little bit more freedom from glasses, especially for that intermediate zone. So you can put the lens here in the eye, and I put it in eyes that are perfectly normal. My criteria for any lens that has diffractive optics, like a trifocal lens, extended up to field optics, like the central beam shaping element, my criteria is that the eye has a normal ocular surface, a normal cornea, a beautiful macula, and a healthy optic nerve. This is not a lens in my practice that's appropriate for patients with corneal disease, macular disease, optic nerve disease like glaucoma. It's just not appropriate. And there's a reason why. Now, I'm not your dad. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to listen to me. If you want to put this in any kind of eye, it will be, go right ahead. Be my guest. But that's really not the best idea in my humble opinion. Now remember, I welcome all technologies. The more eyewall options we have, the better. So I wanna have more and more eyewall designs and let me choose in which patients I wanna put which designs. Look at that central beam shaping element, that looks great. And that beam shaping element certainly works. If we look at the actual FDA trial data, you can see from this curve that the extended depth of focus is that green area, and it certainly does increase that range. But look at the red area. That's the contrast loss. And so when you see this MTF, this modulation transfer function graph, you can see that, yes, the patient definitely gets an increased depth of focus. But, yes, there's also significant contrast loss. Now, I didn't make up this data Look at the link right there. This is from the FDA pivotal trial for this lens. This is real solid data from the manufacturer during the FDA trial. And you can see the numbers are good. About 100 patients in the Vividi arm versus about 100 patients in the monofocal arm. And we can see the results of the studies there. So what does that loss of contrast mean? Well, you tell me. If a patient has corneal disease or ocular surface disease or macular disease or glaucoma, optic nerve disease, do you really want to give them a lens that's going to basically lower their contrast even more, affect their vision even more than it is already? And I think you may be better off coming around to my view, which is I'd rather put in a monofocal lens. I want to maximize image quality and maximize light transmission at the refractive point I've chosen. With most patients, that's about Plano. And if they need to put on readers, so be it. Now, look at the comparison here. I made this to show an example of car, car headlights at night with the monofocal. That's on the left side of the screen. And on the right side of the screen is with the Vividi car headlights again at night. Now, there are no extra rings or glare or halo, I agree, but the contrast is down. And the text on the screen here, which I'm going to read to you, didn't come from me. It came from the manufacturer. If you implant these lenses, open up the box, read the actual package insert, and by golly, you'll see this exact writing. Let's read it together. Most patients implanted with the Acrosoft IQ Vividi IOL are likely to experience significant loss of contrast sensitivity as compared to a monofocal IOL. Therefore, it is essential that prospective patients be fully informed of this risk before giving their consent for implantation of the Acrosoft IQ Vividi IOL. In addition, patients should be warned that they will need to exercise caution when engaging in activities that require good vision in dimly lit environments, such as driving at night or in poor visibility conditions, especially in the presence of oncoming traffic. Now, come on. With that warning from the manufacturer, you want to put this lens in a patient with an ugly, irregular cornea, 
a deformed macula with macular edema and epiretinal membrane with macular degeneration with a glaucomatous optic nerve? Come on. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I like this lens. I'm thankful to Alcon for bringing it to market. It's a very useful lens. I enjoy using it for the right patients. So to answer your question, can I put this lens in patients with unusual or diseased corneas, retinas, maculas, optic nerves? Psh, listen, you do what you want, but I'm not going to be doing that. Thanks for watching.